Our most popular video of last year was making screws using this really clever Da Vinci device. But this video left off before we reached the real goal we were aiming for, which is making highly accurate metal threaded screws. Something that'll be highly useful in a lot of machines we hope to make in the future. Getting a result worthy of a follow-up has ended up being a lot of trial and error and revisions on top of all the stuff we did before. And it's actually taking quite a bit longer now to get a result we're actually satisfied with. But I think we finally achieved a quality result and we can finally put the nail in this coffin. Or I guess technically we could screw it at this point. So in addition to making improvements to the Da Vinci machine to get it up to cutting metal, I also wanted to explore some of the comments and also some other alternative screw making methods just to kind of compare them and at least try them out. There were a lot of suggestions in the comments and wanted to kind of explore some of them. I also came across some other methods of making screws and some research that I found. So I wanted to give them at least a shot just for a kind of comparison of just how hard making screws manually really is. I think a lot of these other methods could potentially work, but they require a lot of practice and a buildup of skills that it, uh, it's gonna take a while, but I wanted to at least give it a stab and kind of show where you're starting from. I think important to kind of keep in mind with this Da Vinci machine, it wasn't the first way to make screws and it wasn't necessarily the simplest or most straightforward. It's just kind of an idea he proposed that kind of mechanizes it and makes it a lot more straightforward and repeatable. And I think kind of the goal we're aiming for is something along the lines of mass production, something where you don't have to develop years of skills to make a perfect screw by hand and you can just use this machine. In that regard, I think it's worked pretty good and made some more improvements. But first, let's try making a few different screws. We put a lot of manual work into these projects, and by the end of the day, things can get a little stinky. <laughs> That's where today's sponsor, Mando, comes in. Mando is a game changer, created by a doctor who saw how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. It's a high-performance, whole-body deodorant designed to keep you fresh everywhere. Pits, feet, and even those hard-to-reach spots. It's clinically proven to control odor better than a shower with soap alone. 12 hours after showering, the average guy's odor level is a 5 out of 10. With Mando, zero. A pea-sized amount of cream deodorant goes a long way. The spray is perfect for quick application. Mm, smells good. And the stick, smooth, residual-free, incredibly effective. It smells great, too. What is that? Mount Fuji. Mando comes in four great scents, bourbon leather, Clover Woods, Mount Fuji, and Pro Sport. They even have an unscented option. Plus, it's skin safe, baking soda free, cruelty free, and pH optimized for your whole body. Right now, the Mando Starter Pack bundle is an incredible deal. It includes a full size stick, a cream or spray deodorant, and two free products like wipes or mini body wash, plus free US shipping. And just for my followers, you can get an extra $5 off when you use the code HTME at checkout. That's over 40% off. Click the link in the description to grab your starter pack and stay fresh anywhere. One comment suggested using rope wrapped around the wood and then adding some sand as an abrasive and drawing it back and forth to grind it along the grooves. A novel idea, but in actually attempting it, I found it pretty much impossible to draw the string if it's wrapped more than a few times around. I even tried it using some abrasive cordage and found it was kind of impossible to get it to sand in the same spot consistently. I think at best it could be used to maybe mark the threading, which leads into the next idea. In a similar thread, one reference I found suggested wrapping a piece of paper around the metal rod to create a consistent thread marking. I gave that a shot to see if I could get a better looking screw to file by hand. The end result was definitely a much more consistent thread. I really struggled to be able to file in the sharp edges of a screw. Achieving that was definitely an art that I'm a ways from. So I did a few different methods of trying to just wrap a wire around and then attaching it either by soldering or welding. And the results are not really that great. At surface level, it actually looks pretty good. But I think at some point when I was trying to adjust the threading and make it more even, actually kind of reversed it. So it's not an even spiral. It actually kind of wiggles. I did manage to get 
kind of consistent threading, but does not really succeed at being a screw. I think with a lot more practice, this would definitely be a viable way to do it, but it was a lot of work. It's definitely a method that works, but I wouldn't say it's greatest. In the process of making the DaVinci thread making machine, we came up with a simple tool used to basically mark threading on wooden dowels. And we had some comments pointing out that we could essentially just use a tool like this to basically just cut our own threads. And so what I did is I kind of iterated on that and made a better version of that tool. Essentially, I made a thicker cutting blade and cut the blade into sort of like a sawtooth type design. And then I just used a simple tensioner type set up to basically hold the blade on end and I think we came up with pretty decent results. You still have to kind of work the cutting tool back and forth over the dowel several times but I can show you how it works right here. But I don't know if you can hear that but it does sound a lot more aggressive than the original tool which is a good sign. And then like I mentioned, uh, you can work it back and forth a little bit uh, and essentially tighten the tensioner on this to deepen the blade and cut a deeper groove into the dowel. Uh, but I'd say that's a pretty good start right there. Nice consistent threads. I've got a good half inch to work with here. Um, and so it's just a matter of just tightening it, going down maybe a millimeter or two each time. So I also had CEO experiment with making a square screw and then twisting it, and also a flat one and twisting it. The results of that were not the most consistent. So with this, for actually screwing it into something, it probably worked good. But for like making a nut for it, I don't think it's quite consistent enough. But I think this is potentially a viable way to do it if you get enough practice and probably if you get a long enough one, you can just kind of select a section that is fairly consistent. This is not gonna be the level of precision where we're really hoping for here. There were a few comments that said if I took the wood screw and then just use that as a mold for casting, I could do that. I was kind of skeptical of this because the threading of it is pretty fine and it's hard to really get that level of detail. Um, I've tried a few experiments before of trying to do it in plaster and just the, the fine ridges just end up kind of crumbling and yeah. not gotten a good result there. But I would want to try this again in sand casting, which is what you kind of have to do if you carve it in wood first. actually got some pretty promising results. This lug knot here, the, the threading on it actually turned out pretty good. I had to do a little bit of grinding along the edges where there's some flashing, but overall it actually came in pretty good and I think this would actually be a pretty effective screw. And I did it in bronze, so it probably won't be as strong as a regular steel nail, but I think it'd be pretty decent. So then I wanted to see how fine of thread you could actually cast and tried something a little bit finer. And once again, a fairly decent result. I think I lost more detail with this, especially along the edges. So this required a lot more grinding, but compared to like just starting from scratch, this was a lot less and was very easy to just kind of fill in the lines between. So I think this casting an actual threaded rod is a lot more realistic than I expected. I think getting anything more fine than this is gonna be challenging. This also limits you to just copper alloys, but I was genuinely surprised how well this actually worked out and could be a viable solution if we can't cut our own threads. But now onto actually making our Da Vinci machine better and hopefully getting a better result than all of these previous ways. A lot of people were fascinated with the potential of the machine being able to make its own lead screws and being able to improve upon itself. So we first set out about making some new sets of those.
This is our current state of the upgraded screw machine. The first step we did was use the machine to cut new wooden screws. However, once we finished cutting the screws, we had a critical realization. Because of how our gearing works, whatever the lead screws run at, the finished screw will actually be reverse threaded. But what that means is if you use these to replace the lead screws, you're now cutting reverse threading. We made a lot of upgrades to the machine itself. We did change the gearing, so we moved the larger gear in the center to the outside, and then one of the outside gears into the inside. What we noticed is as we we're cutting threads, they're coming out at probably, I'd say, quarter inch wide threads. And then when we switch to a smaller dowel, uh, the proportion just wasn't right. We were getting these really wide cut threads. And so we changed the ratio so that's a little more realistic. So now even on a smaller dowel like this, we're sitting at maybe that same quarter inch width. I also changed the takedown of the machine itself. So now to take it down, you would start by taking out the crank on the outside and that allows the entire uh, guts in the machine to slide out and replace with whatever parts you need to. We worked on the cutting tool. We flipped it over and we changed the saw teeth on the outside there to basically file teeth on the inside there and did our best to harden them so they can cut into the metal. And as you can see from the iron shavings, uh, I think it does actually a pretty good job. Also, uh, the carriage itself has been replaced. Um, even though we didn't want to do that originally, we ended up reinforcing the inner threads on the carriage system to be a lot more robust and handle just a lot more cranking force, which I think turned out pretty well. Now we've just got to put in the elbow grease and get it cut. So with all of Elliot's improvements, we were able to get the machine up and cutting pretty well into a metal rod. I think a big thing, a big thing that a lot of people commented on was using the machine to make improvements to itself to make a better machine. The big issue I ran into is I haven't found a really good way to measure the thread so I could determine if it's getting more or less accurate as we do iterations. I tried using like a gauge to measure it, but as far as I could tell, it was actually pretty consistent. So there weren't too many flaws at surface level. So I, I would require something a lot more precise to really tell. So then I figured probably kind of the ultimate test of precision is to basically try and recreate a store-bought thread. See if I can buy a store-bought nut that'll actually fit straight onto it. So if that nut will fit and stay consistent, I think that's a pretty good sign. We have a pretty precise machine. However, there was a few problems with that. The main thing is that our lead screws are pretty far spaced out. So to make something that's much more compact as standard threading, it's gonna require some pretty large gearing changes. And the other issue is that a lot of people wanted us to make our own lead screws and replace the ones we made by hand with ones made by machine, and in theory, potentially get something even more precise. The issue with that though, is that the DaVinci machine as I had it built actually reverses the thread. But we went through and made two rods, but now they're backwards. So if we use that, anything we would make after that would be reverse threaded. So the solution to both of these problems though is just add more gears. Of course, that means we need to completely rebuild the machine. So to speed things up, I use a, a laser cutter to help make a bunch of gears. I'm doing some rough math on how the gearing impacts the thread count, I figured I need to factor it by eight which is a pretty big gear, but if it's split between two sets of gears, you only have to multiply it by four on each one. That has the advantage that it's actually also reversing the direction one more time so that we can use our standard threaded lead screws as reference and make a standard thread rod. Kind of ballpark numbers, but hopefully if I did it right, we should make something that is basically the same as a store-bought thread. One other suggestion that I tried to take from the comments was the idea of using a longer nut to reference the lead screw. Built the whole new machine using that and got it up and running. And we were able to cut some decent grooves into it. And when I used a thread guide to actually test it, I was very surprised how dead on it was to a 20 thread per inch threaded rod. So the, the end result is 
pretty much a standard threaded rod. So I think we've been able to take this invention to the finish line and get a very satisfying, highly precise and accurate threaded rod that I think is gonna open the door for a lot of new things. And perhaps the best part about being able to make a threaded metal rod is that by cutting in a few slots around it and tapering the end, you can actually use it to make your own drill tap, which now allows us to make nuts so much easier. I look forward to being able to use this technology on future machines, especially lathe. I think it's really useful for locking things in tightly. So I think this is gonna be a pretty big game changer. And I think DaVinci's machine has been proven to be pretty effective. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. See you next time.